like I want to just take my time and not not blow up really fast and try to just slowly build this up where it's like a long lasting yeah. brand. Welcome. And we're live. What's up, Danny? What's up, man? How Thanks are you for man? having me? Of course, man. Thanks for coming. Stoked. Uh, I'm excited. So like we um, we don't know each other, which is always fun for these things. Well, I know you. Yeah, but you don't know me. I know of you. <laughs> so that's, well, I know of you too, right? So that's oh, okay. what makes these things fun is like, this is uh, legitimately, uh, I have a lot of questions. I know of you. I've heard your name a million times. Uh, we have some mutual friends. I saw that you were hanging out with Mikey Taylor the other day. Oh yeah, I love Mikey. Great guy. Yeah. Uh, so he's a really good friend of mine. But we have uh, mutual friends. Your name has come up a million times. Your clothing stuff has come up. So um, this is my chance to just uh, get to know you, man, and ask you a million questions. All right. Um, I think my first question is, what, like, where are you from? Um, I'm from Inglewood, Florida. Okay. It's like an hour and a half, hour and a half south of uh, Tampa. Okay. And what, like, what's, what do you do as a child in that area? Oh, man. Skateboards? Sports, yeah, sports. It's like very, like, white trash. Yeah. So, Sick. just Florida stuff, I guess. Yeah, me too. Pretty much. Um, yeah. Got it. And then, like, um... What about brothers, sisters? What's the family situation look like growing up? Yeah, big, pretty big family. I mean, just my like immediate was just a sister and a brother, but like I have a ton of cousins and aunts yeah. and uncles and stuff. So it was pretty big, we, you know, camping and all that, four wheelers yeah. and stuff like that. I guess. And was there ever any like, did you have any early dreams or passions or like what you thought your life was going to be early on? Um, I always wanted to be rich. That was like yep. my entire life. And yep. then, uh, did you ever do like vision boards and shit like that? Yeah, 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 definitely. I would put, I would like cut shit out of like magazines, and, like tape it on my wall and glue it on walls or whatever, and, like posters. Yeah. But um, yeah, I always wanted to be wealthy. I thought I would become like a pro athlete or something. Yeah. So I thought I'd be famous one day. Yeah. But that was pretty much the like. That's the extent of it. Yeah. Yeah. That was like what I envisioned, I guess. Was it more like sports, sports or like skating, BMXing stuff? I I started skating when I was like fourteen, but I played like baseball my whole life. Got it. And then I just didn't grow obviously i'm just like this but i had the same problem so yeah i was like eventually gave that up started running and then i switched to triathlon but did a lot of sports growing up um yeah got it and then where does making content come into that picture um so i had been around skating like my whole life yeah and then i was involved in sports my whole life and then i was like i'm not fucking going pro you know what i mean so i'm like I wanted to be involved in sports still, so yeah. I just switched to training athletes. So I started working with ath athletes a lot. What age was that? Um, probably like twenty, Got it. twenty-one maybe. So you were hustling. Yeah, always, always doing shit. And then, uh, so started started training athletes, and then I always had this idea of working with uh, skateboarders because yeah. I just saw they would like destroy their bodies. Yeah. And then I I never did it though, just because it seemed hard. But mm -hmm. so I just kept doing the personal training, like the normal shit, working with normal athletes, you know. And then I saw Zion Wright's uh, Florida Days part, and then I just hit him up, and I was like, yo, I, I think I could help you with some shit, you know? And then talked to his dad, and it ended up, like, meeting up with him, started helping him a little bit, and then uh, talked to Skate Park of Tampa and started doing, like, Tampa Am, Tampa Pro, where I would just roll up there, and I did this thing called uh, active isolated stretching, uh -huh. and I would just help them, you know, when they fuck with their ankles or if they were too tight and, like, just work on skaters, and so I was doing that. Sorry, it's a long story. No, then, that's what I want. Yeah, that's so, why it's short story long. It's so yeah, I was doing like, yeah, Tampa Am, Tampa Pro, doing damn Ams, like all these contests. And then uh, just, you know, for skating, everyone comes to LA. Yeah. So eventually I came out to LA. Fucking dude, did a bunch of shit. And then I uh, started working with like, everyone in skateboarding pretty much. That's crazy. I didn't realize how like, um, like skateboarding was such a, like I kept asking the skater question because you seem like a skater. I didn't realize yeah. that skateboarding was like such a part of your yeah, thing. a huge part. And yeah, that's why these people at Zoomies like talk shit. These little fuckers on Instagram. Yeah. I'm like, dude, fuck you. Dude. I've been skating my whole life. Yeah. Well, <laughs> but, they say like you're not a real skater. No, nah, it's just people don't know. They're like oh, fucking putting posers, and I'm like, I mean, I'm not uh, good yeah, at skating. Yeah, yeah. I'm not good at skating by any means, but I'm not like a poser, you know. Well, let me tell you this. I got the same feedback, and I'm good at skating, and I've yeah, skated my whole life. Exactly. And it's, it doesn't matter. Yeah. No one cares. It does. Like, I whatever. just put my address. I'm just like, yeah, come to my address. <laughs> I just like, put my actual address there. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So then I worked with all these skaters, and then uh, I ended up getting referred to Jason Lee, the skater, like actor guy. Yep. And then. Uh, and so you're doing. Sorry to keep interrupting you. I'm just trying to wrap my head around it. Like, 
you were you're doing like stretching and stuff with these guys yeah like stretching and personal training Got just because they're like fucking their bodies up every day and like they don't do anything they just like what drink beer and smoke you for know? sure eat but did you foods. do like how did you get them to do it like one big <clears> thing in skating is like everyone just drinks beer and eats shitty foods like yeah, were you was, doing a different style or? it was crazy man i mean if you really think about it, it was I don't want to say it was revolutionary, but it was there was none of the you know the third guns and yeah. like the foam rollers. It was not around when I was doing it, really. Yeah. You had uh, keep hitting this mic. You had like uh, okay. that Doctor Dave guy. I think was yeah. probably the only one really, and he was working with like Sheckler and Nigel yeah. and like maybe a couple others, but no one really did it. I just came here for a week. Some some random kid picked me up at the airport. I went to like all these different skaters houses and just like stretch them and for like Instagram shout out. Yeah. You know, Justin Williams by chance. Yeah. So he like kind of linked me up with everyone, him and this kid named Conrad. And they just like linked me up with all these skaters. I did that. And then word got around and that really helped. Cool. And then, uh, people, I guess, I mean, when like Andrew Reynolds posts you, everyone kind of fucks with you at that point. Yeah. So that helped. And then, uh, so a yeah. lot of it was social media, like we all DMing people Instagram. and all that stuff. Yeah. I had like uh, Justin Williams, Conrad, those two guys, just like kind of linked me up with everyone and then everything was like I, I would help them for free and they would just Instagram shout me out. Got it. And then yeah, I just I think from I had like a thousand followers and then I left in like a week and I had like five thousand followers. Yeah. All in skateboarding off stretching people, which is like Yeah. You know. That's wild. And then and then you when you left you went back to Florida, you're saying? Yeah, I went back to Florida. I would do like landscaping and personal training a little bit and then uh I would save up some money, book a flight, come back out here and then uh yeah, just keep going back and forth. And what was like, because I think that like a lot of people that listen to these type of podcasts and stuff and probably watch your stuff, like are probably in the phase right now of the landscaping and the trying to hustle on Instagram. So like during that phase, what was going on in your head? Like, were you thinking like, man, I got to get out of Florida, like still focused on I'm going to get rich. I got to like, blow up. Dude. Yeah. Like, what was, like, <laughs> like what's going on in your head? Were you pissed? Were you like, I fucking hate landscaping? Dude, like, I hate it. I hate landscaping. Yeah. I still hate landscaping. Yeah. It's still true. I don't think anyone like. No, nah, in Florida, it's just too hot. Yeah. It's like fucking really hot. So I was like, I mean, I had a good boss, so he was cool as fuck. Yeah. He, he, I mean, he would even let me film on the, on the like job sometimes if something was funny. Yeah. So he, would, I mean, I was fortunate for that and like he'd pay me in cash and stuff. So it was cool. But uh, yeah, landscaping just sucks. Yeah. People who do it now. But um, I was just trying to get money, come to LA and just keep, keep us. I knew that. I think I was gaining like a hundred subscribers like a month. Yeah. And I knew like if I just kept going eventually I would be be big. Well anyway, that Jason Lee guy was like he's like, Yeah, you're funny, I think you could do well do acting, you know. He's told me to do Instagram and YouTube. So he was like, If you have followers on Instagram and YouTube, you can it's easier to get like a like a gig with an audition. Yeah. So that gave me a lot of confidence to just like never give up really on it. That's why. And I was like, well, if he thought I was funny, then maybe I'm funny, you know? Yeah, how cool that like the original like inspiration to start a page was from Jason Lee. Yeah, because I, I had a page for like the stretching shit. I would make like all these like stretch videos on like how to strengthen your ankles or 10 tips to do this or whatever. Yep. So I just switched that to like, you know, the stuff I did as a kid anyway in Florida and then just started doing, I mean... Like Robin Big, obviously, I watch that like every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that's that CKY Jackass. Those are like my. Um, I was showing them the clip of you with the fucking rat on the door. Yeah, and that shit's so funny. What's funny is I just watched that the other day. Dude, it came on like a thing on YouTube, and I was like, "What the fuck was I doing?" Like, no, you know what no, I mean? That like, was the best. Now I see those videos, and I'm like, "I what? wouldn't even be no, here no. if that wouldn't have happened." That's sick. Not a chance. Thank God for that stupid I rat, know. man. I love yeah, that it's, rat. it's funny when you watch it like this late, like this much later. It's like. What the hell? Like, yeah, what, you know does, what, I mean? what is it? What is it like for you? Like the immaturity type stuff. Is it like not funny anymore? No, it's still older? funny because for me, it's probably more funny because okay. I think at the time I was actually probably so overwhelmed by like what was happening. Yeah, yeah. And like the scale, you know, because for me, like fresh out of Ohio with like a crew, like imagine all these guys in the room plus five more, and they all have booms and cameras and shit like that. You don't really understand, but you know that this stupid thing you're doing in the kitchen is going to end up on MTV. Yeah. So there's this weird and, pressure. And that was when MTV was big and popping. Yeah. And then really like, popping, exactly. No. It was but the it biggest was thing the ever. the biggest thing, yeah. And then like, you know, they're going to edit it. It's going to become this whole other thing. So you're like, man, do I look like an idiot? Is everyone going to think I'm stupid? Like whatever. And But now I can watch <laughs> it back and it's like watching like a home video or something. It's probably the same as if you watched old YouTube videos, yeah, yeah. you know? But then the trippy thing is when I meet people like you that are like, oh, yeah, I, I grew up watching that. Like, there's this weird, like, you know, connection where so many people saw those dumb moments in, like, our kitchen. Yeah, no, you I watch I mean? every episode. That's amazing. I have them on DVD and I have them on my iTunes right now. So good. Apple TV. So you, at that point, you switched 
you, did you stop making the training things and you started so, doing yeah, that? So, yeah, I would slowly, because I, I, when I was, like, living here, I would just go to, like, Stoner. Yeah. And, like, I would go to, like, all these parks and just set up my massage table and, like, stretch skaters for, like, tips. The fuck? That's like, sick. the barracks and shit. Like, I would just go to, around doing that. And then, uh, yeah, when that happened, I would slowly started, like, doing that and started, you know, making more content. I started, you know, me and Chris Chan made videos in the beginning. Yeah. And then uh, just did a bunch of shit. And I was just trying to always be super consistent with it. Yeah. I think I've posted, like, probably a video every week for the last like five years that's so nuts so and then what was the like when did any sort of transition happen where you could stop working and start <clears throat> focusing on videos like was that a very long process or yeah it took a while how did yeah. that how did that go um i don't know it's very it's really been slow and steady this whole like thing but i think just the landscaping i'd go back and then do the landscaping come back to la yeah and then do that and then go back to the landscaping and then I think eventually I just came back to LA and then I didn't when I went back I didn't have to do landscaping anymore yeah kind of like that and I remember I got like a a brand deal for like five grand and then I got like I signed with the YouTube network and got another five thousand dollar signing bonus yeah and I bought a Honda Fit for like five thousand that's sick and that was like my down payment and then and then we we drove it <laughs> we drove it to LA like, from Florida yeah and then that's I pretty it. much was like at that point I kind of was good on money yeah I didn't really I wasn't as struggling anymore like that. And then was that, that was technically like when you moved to LA officially or no? Well, I still go back and forth now. Got it. Like I, I never really will. Um, I don't think I'll ever be here like year round. Got it. But And then what like, like was there a moment when, and this is what I'm trying to wrap my head around because like my, like we have kind of a similar past in that stuff, like with the content stuff, but but different. Like for me, my stuff was like film, a pilot like get the pilot approved and all of a sudden it's on mtv and like things change tomorrow yeah um so with you it was like this long steady growth but like was there a time when you felt like okay this is me like this is the type of content i make here's my approach like if i do this be like here's the blueprint to becoming really successful like did it ever start to click like that or I've just been building it up. I, I mean, I don't know if I'm answering this correctly, but I've, I've been just trying to build it up correctly the whole time yeah. from the start. Yeah. I never wanted to like lie to my audience. I never wanted to be fake. I never wanted to like feed them bullshit. Yeah. Because I like see these people like just feeding everyone bullshit and you just see it's like cringy and corny and yeah. like, you know, they're just whack. Yeah. So I, didn't, I never wanted to be like that. I mean, I, I was, I guess starting out with pranks. Yeah. So I would see like these fake prank videos and people think it's real. And I was like, dude, what is wrong with you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I kind of started exposing that a little bit. Like, yeah proving how they were fake did you like mean, call people out yeah i kind of started like a huge trend on that which kind of destroyed a bunch of like prank videos i guess and like yeah. pranksters in that that sense so i kind of killed that era um yeah. did you ever have any problems with that did any prankers ever like try to fight you or anything no they're all pussies <laughs> honestly they just act like they're like badasses but they're yeah you know they're not they yeah, just yeah, talk yeah. shit and don't do anything yeah um but yeah the people like talk shit like, uh, I think Vitaly said he'd box me or something, and then I was just like, I was like, or he said, like, five grand, uh, you and I in the ring, win or lose money's yours, and I was like, let's just make an event out of it. Yeah. Because that was at the time when I was still irrelevant, and he was, like, big. Yeah. But now he's not really popping anymore, yeah. so. Well, that's how things go. Yeah. Um, Same for me. And One then day. what about, what about, what about, like, um, was there ever, like, uh, and I'm sorry that I keep, I keep asking this question because I'm trying to... I'm just trying to understand it. Like, was there ever a video that you posted that like took off like more than the last? You know, like where you were like, oh shit. Um, it was like I think my biggest video ever was. I mean, I already had like we had over a million. You think at the driving my sister's car in the lake? Yeah. So I was already like big enough, you know. Yeah. And that was the first time I had a video that like actually, you know, you saw like it fucking blew up. Yeah. So I drove my sister's video? car into a lake and surprised her with a new one. Uh huh. And it, I think I gained like 100k subs in a day, like, li and that was like the biggest one. It's still to date. Like, I never really had a like a blow up moment. It's all been like, if you look at my numbers, it's just like super like yeah, slow and steady. But that's the way I wanted it because I, I see people blow up really fast. Yeah, and then they just die out hard. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the damn Daniel kid or like yeah. So I, I was like scared of that. I was like, I want to just take my time and not not blow up really fast and try to just slowly build this up where it's like a long lasting yeah. brand. Was what I was trying to do. Because um, what do you think about, like, it seems to me, from my perspective, like, a lot of YouTubers <laughs> sort of go on this path where you have to be as shocking as possible. And so then you just, like, go so outlandish and you can't 
keep it up and it's like you either burn out or people get bored or whatever like does it do you think that that number one do you think that i'm right in think like is that what people Whoa, are doing what do you mean exactly like well like, i'll can say you give me an example not to um you can shit talk somebody sure sure and not to really i mean whatever these guys are fine but like even the the jake paul <clears throat> uh logan paul stuff like when those guys were vlogging it felt like they every vlog had to be so much crazier than the last and it got them both in trouble it got them both like where so many people disliked them and it's like you can't even keep that up like how many times can you light your whole swimming pool on fire yeah i just i don't like watch their videos i just but i know i know what you mean but they're i just feel like they I don't, it's a hard one to like i don't know how to answer it really yeah i feel like they're too big like they're not gonna go anywhere you know what i mean yeah so i feel like they're kind of just they're good i feel like they're good to go they're they're like a like everyone knows who they are yeah but the thing is, like, they're not, like, let's just say I'm a kid trying to figure out my YouTube career, trying to plan it all out. They're not still making vlogs and, like, one-upping. You know, like, that model sort of ended. Like, you can't oh, keep yeah. that up. Yeah. You know what I mean? So even though they're just famous as shit and they can go box someone for $10 million or whatever. Yeah. They're, I mean, that, like, that blueprint of, like, I'm just going to be so outlandish every time, the next time, the next time, feels like not a good model if you're trying to get into this stuff do you think that or no i think it's just i don't even know it's just hard to even get in right now because it's so like oversaturated yeah but yeah you yeah but i do tell kids sometimes like just to be yourself because when you're, you're when you're actually yourself then you're different from everyone else because you're yourself yeah so i think that really helps a lot yeah, yeah. but yeah you do have to like be you know what i mean go, you do have to go hard yeah but i mean like i did this one prank where i tore my mom's mailbox down and then put like a giant dick mailbox up yeah but like i've never seen anyone do that you know but yeah. that was just being me being myself but going hard at my ideas yeah and like being creative but like i mean it's like random but like too i think too many people are just copying other people yeah. like a lot obviously yeah. but so i try to like but i don't know yeah and it seems like from yours like from what i gathered from yours like it's not that everything is so ridiculously like outlandish it's your like funny idea you know what i mean so this yeah. thing might be kind of like obscure or this thing like i just watched one where you were uh fake tripping with pennies and like pennies are going like that's not like it's not that you can't one up that it's just that's your original idea you know yeah, what i mean yeah, yeah. i just feel like the and like i said maybe i'm looking at it weird because i'm not a youtuber and i don't quite like fully understand that like world but like it feels like there was kind of this model of like just be ridiculous or or like tie in some sort of drama to what you're doing. Like you're in a relationship with this YouTuber and oh my gosh, we're beefing. And yeah, it's just whack. Tie in, you know what I mean? Like you yeah. just can't keep that up. Like even Jake Paul, once again, I'm not trying to diss him, but like had to go get married to, to another YouTuber to like just keep up the story. Yeah, they just, I don't know, whatever, I don't know. They just <laughs> do whatever they can, I guess. Yeah. I just stay out of that. Yeah. That's, I think it's all whack. Yeah, it just seems like you've been able to, like, create your own world, your own following. Yeah, that's what I wanted. I wanted to, like, dude, all these YouTubers are pussies. They, like, suck. Like, <laughs> yeah. like I'm not saying anyone specific, specific right now. Just I just mean, like, the them. masses, like, 90% yeah. of them. Yeah. But, like, there's a lot of cool ones, too, you know? Yeah. Like, even FaZe Rugg is someone who I would have talked shit about. Yeah. Just because he's, like, t geared towards kids. But yeah. then I met him, and he's, like, very nice. He's you know? a nice Super nice guy. Ever. Yeah. yeah, super nice. Yeah. So, like, you have that, too. So I try not to, like, I try not to judge people too much. Yeah. It's like anything, but a For lot sure. of the content is just garbage. But, yeah. But yeah. Just yeah. fake people. But where do you think it goes? Like, because, I mean, you're not the only one who feels that way, right? Like, I think a lot of people, like, I think, uh, once again. The, I think the, some of them, they some of them feel that about themselves. Because they meet pussies? me and they're like, they'll tell me what they do. And they're like, I, I'm not a pussy, I swear. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> because I always like talk shit. And I'm yeah. just like, well, what do you do it then, dude? Yeah. Like, I don't know. Yeah. It just doesn't make sense. But where me. does it go? Like, um, I, I think, like you said, like there was kind of this gold rush of like, everyone thinks they're gonna be the next big YouTuber, right? Cause like, they just, it just looked like nothing but opportunity. Yeah. Now it's so hard. Like start trying to build a following is so freaking hard. Um, like, where do you think, what do you think the way in is? Like if you're a young kid that wants to like follow in your path or someone similar, what do I, where do you start? Um, fuck, <laughs> I don't know. It's like, <laughs> it's just weird. Uh, if you were trying to do what I was doing, uh, I mean, I, I guess just, provide value to someone who's big maybe yeah. and then just ask them to help you yeah but it's like who wants to who wants to help somebody you know it's yeah, like yeah everyone's yeah. asking the same shit yeah it's too difficult i don't know yeah it just seems so hard it seems like 
there's so many people. I feel like you either have it or you don't. Not, and, and I don't want to say that in a negative way, but like, or, or for what I do, I feel like a kid would either like be like this or they wouldn't be like this. Yeah. And then if someone's not like this, they might be able to do something else, like maybe react to videos or yeah. maybe have a podcast or maybe have a cooking channel. But like, I feel like for whatever each each genre of things, I feel like that person might already have that or they don't have that, if yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, no, it does. I feel like you can't really teach certain things. Yeah, it does. I, I just feel like it's it it feels it feels like it's this interesting time. Like I think social media and all that stuff was such just looked at, like I said, as like wide open opportunity for the last like, I don't know, two or three years maybe. Yeah. And now going into let's just say twenty twenty, it feels like I don't know, like is that really like a likely path for a kid to just go become the next Logan Paul? I don't know. Like it, it feels like things are changing and it almost feels like the people that are in there, like you're in there, you have a built-in fan base, YouTube is obviously, and social media is obviously like a verified, everyone loves it, it's not going anywhere. Yeah. Um, but it seems kind of like the people that got in and built the followings are gonna be okay as long as you continue to like innovate and grow. And but the entry point is very tough. Yeah, I have I have seen like people coming off that TikTok shit. Yeah. So I mean, there might be more apps like that or something like Yeah. I don't know exactly, but Are you on TikTok? I have one. I don't really like. I just rip clips off my Instagram and put it on there. What do you think about it? Like what's uh, your perspective as a guy who's like built this like It's just media? whack. I mean, the content's just trash. Yeah. But I mean, I have seen like funny videos on there too. Yeah. But like, like I said, like the masses of the content is so shitty. Yeah. It's just trash. But do you feel like, uh, like shit? I gotta figure this out. Like, Mikey gotta, loves it. Mikey loves it. Yeah. Yeah. Me and like, Mikey talk about it all the time. Mikey's we're trying to figure it out. Because <laughs> for us, like, we see a new platform. And we're like, shit. We gotta figure out like what's our version of this. Yeah, but that's what I mean. Like, so you gotta obviously like keep your shit like relevant. So yeah. It's like, I don't know. It's, it's just, tricky, man. Do you worry about that? Do you do you worry about like, okay, what am I gonna do on TikTok or not really? No, not at all. Yeah. I don't even think about it. I just like take shit I put on Instagram and just put it over there. Yeah. But I don't I don't even care about having an account. I just made one just so that I had my at. Yeah. But um just in case it is around in two years or a year. But yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. know what's gonna happen. But Yeah, I feel like that could be it. The next generation I think of like people like that Charlie girl. Have you seen that Charlie girl on TikTok? Oh, uh, I have not. She's like this just like this crazy like the one like superstar of TikTok. My point is now she's making YouTube videos. Like I think sh there will be like a few people that come up from that app. The same way Vine. Oh yeah, was. yeah, yeah, exactly. Like you're gonna have that very like top like yeah point zero five percent yeah that just like come apart and switch over and it works on everything and yeah. But but yeah, most of them won't. They'll just be stuck. Yeah. Um, okay, I want to talk about clothing. Obviously, where when did the idea for clothing come up? Why did you choose Virginity Rocks as your foundation? Uh, where, like, where? How did this transition happen? Oh man. Uh, well, I was making money on YouTube, and I, I wanted to obviously, you know, make money in different ways. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I like wanted to do my own merch. Um, it used to be Teespring. Teespring would tell you how many were sold yeah. per campaign. I was always scared. Like, I didn't want to have that and say like three sold. Yeah. So I just fucking never did it, and then I just kept waiting. And eventually, Teespring changed it where it didn't say that, and I was like. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. and I, uh, did it tell you like publicly? It would publicly oh, say like, that. and I was like too scared, dude. I just I didn't want it. It'd be like telling people to like come to a meetup and five kids show up. Yeah. I just, it was, and then everyone knows. Yeah, I'd be like nervous of that. Yeah. So I like waited for a while on that shit. Um. So then I did it, and I was just trying to get money to get, put the uh, deposit for my apartment in LA. Yeah. So I needed like two grand. So I did that Teespring thing, and I made like eleven. Waited like a week, did it again, made another like ten. And I waited a month, and I was like, "Surely no one wants the shirts." Yeah. Then it made like fifteen grand, and I was like, "Oh my god." Yeah. That was that was when money was like, I was like, "Oh okay, now I had some money." Yeah. Like, and what did those shirts say? It was like a McDonald's like logo, like uh, the McDonald's guy running, and I just changed my and put my face on it. Yeah. And changed the M to like sixty nine, and then just put like different colors, and that was a cool thing because I didn't have like, you know, like I could do like a shirt, a hoodie, a long sleeve with no overhead. Yep. Um. That's great. So that yeah, that was cool, and then uh. Started there and then yeah, we eventually we I I started doing it myself. It was a fucking nightmare. Yep. So much shit in my house and then packing orders like I'd pull like overnights and just pack all the orders. Yep. In my in in the background of my cousin's house. Yeah, and it just sucked. But it was cool because I started having money coming in, you know, in different ways, not yep. just the YouTube. And then uh, the adpocalypse thing happened yep. right when I did merch. So it was like my ads went down and then the merch went right up. Yep. And I was yep. like, oh, this worked perfect. So that saved my ass. 
And then why do you think, like, here's another big thing that I've noticed from my perspective is there's um, a lot of people on social media, a lot of people with big followings. You're following no longer, I don't know if it ever did, it no longer guarantees sales. So why do you think you and why do you think some people are able to sell their own products and some people can't sell literally anything? Oh my God. Um, like, is it the connection that you have with your fans? Like, is it like, do you think that there was something more real about it? Where like, definitely. The, I'm very like open and honest, like mm -hmm. very honest. I try. I mean, I feel like when I say something, they, the people that watch my videos, they know I'm not like, like I turn down ads all day. I don't promote anything. Like they know, like if I say it, it's like, I mean it type shit. Yeah. 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 But, um, I mean, someone said like, was it Mark? Maybe he said like, people want to be like me. I don't want to say it in a conceited way, but like he said like fans buy my stuff because they want to be like me or whatever. So I think, but that like makes sense because like when I buy shit, like, um, like Robin Big, you know, yeah. I wanted to be like Robin Big, like back in the day, I bought like the, the BB shirts. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like the, it's things like that. I mean, I'll buy like Daniel Tosh shit because uh, like, because I'm such a fan of him. So I think it's like the same thing. So I just try to do my best and make shirts that I think people would like to wear. And it, yeah. basically if I don't want to wear it, it's like, I don't want to sell the shit. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So I try to always do that. And, because I don't want to be like making some wax shirt that I wouldn't wear, yeah. but then trying to sell it to my fans for them to wear. It's like, so that's that's what I try to do. But I think a lot of, um, I think a lot of people do a lot of collabs and they just, because they just think of numbers and they just get these numbers, yeah. but the numbers don't really mean anything because they're just like trying to get the numbers in. Yeah. But it's instead of just taking your time and building it up the right way and yeah. like worrying about like quality. Yep. Yeah. Because that, that's what I always worry about was like quality rather than just oh, let me collab with him and him and him and her and her and him and just get all these numbers that don't mean shit and no one, none of them care about you. Yeah. And then you have their followers and their followers and their followers and their followers and their followers. I just have my followers. Yeah. So then I'll shit on everyone else, you know? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So it's like, it doesn't really matter. It's great too because it allows you to call everyone a pussy because you don't really need anyone. I don't. I don't, I don't even collab. I, I literally would not be doing this. Not that it matters. I'm, I'm really a nobody, but... <laughs> But not that it matters. I would not be here if it yeah. wasn't for the Robin Big Show, too. Yeah. For sure, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, that was the best shit ever. That's amazing. Um, okay, so then how does that? How does like a Teespring hustle to pay rent, uh, like, turn into this whole merch thing? I mean, now this stuff you're at Zoom. Stefan, right? baby, what happened, man. man? What's Stefan do? All right, I met with him. <laughs> All right, my management at the time they were like, "You're too vulgar. We got to let you go." But we did get you this meeting with the merch guy. Uh -huh. I was like, thank God. I didn't know at the time. I was like, all right, cool. They were fucking pussies. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> I'm not going to I'm not gonna say who they are. They're, it was just whack, dude. Mm -hmm. They dropped me for no reason. Mm -hmm. um, but they did They did link me with him. Best thing ever. Um, I met with him, and I'm like, dude, I'm telling you, bro. I can do 30K a month in sales. I uh -huh. promise. He's like, all right, dude. <laughs> <laughs> okay, dude. <laughs> so I meet with him, and dude, I'm telling you, each month is bigger and bigger. and I mean, still, it's been years. Thanks. Shit's still getting bigger. Yeah. It's just like. And I was like, I told you I could have done 30, 30K a month. Yeah. So because it was, uh, I was always scared of, I had 100% equity. I mean, I still have 100% equity, but I had 100% of the sales. Yeah. I was scared of giving up that cut. I yeah. wanted to keep it all. But um, I gave up, you know, that small percent to the merch company. Yeah. Um, they took all the merch out of my warehouse. They handled the shipping. They handled the customer service. They handled everything. Yeah. All I had to do is now come up with ads, promote it, come up with designs. Um, and that just because of the time, I didn't have to pack orders anymore. It yeah. just gave me so much time to like make content and, and, uh, make ideas and all that shit. So I just blew that, blew it up. Yeah. So it was way better. Just doing orders yourself sucks. Yeah. 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 No, I get it. And then what, um, like what's the virginity rocks thing? Like where did that whole idea come from? Uh, I just saw it online. thought it was funny. <laughs> I was going to buy the shirt. Like somebody had a virginity rock shirt. Someone was wearing it and I was like, that shit's hilarious. Mm -hmm. I was like, I like that shirt. And then, uh. Um, so yeah, I was, I was like, tr I was Googling it, trying to find where I could buy one. I couldn't find it anywhere. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to lie and say I came up with it, but, no, no, yeah, it's um, I was trying to find, it, I couldn't, the design anyway was whack. I didn't like the design. Yeah. So I was like, I already had this like logo, this font I liked. So I was like, had my uh, graphic artist dude. I was like, yeah, put that font and then let's use like college school colors. Yeah. And I just did like a USC colorway and like a Pittsburgh Steeler colorway. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, we dropped those shirts and that's, that's how, that's how it happened. And why do you think... Like, I mean, that like, comes back to the two where I, like, I didn't want to buy that shirt because I didn't want to wear it, you know? So I made the shirt the way I would want it, yeah. that I would wear it. And then yeah, I yeah, sold yeah. it to Yeah. So hundred percent. That makes sense. 
And then obviously the obvious question is like, are you, is there anything, like, are you on like an anti-sex campaign or like what, is there anything that you tie in? Does that tie into what you talk about or anything like that? Or is it more that like, it's your sense of humor? Uh, I mean, it goes like either way. Like I, I definitely think, um, uh, yeah, I think kids should not like worry about it so much. Mm -hmm. Not get pressured into it too early. About sex. Take your time. Yeah. yeah. And do you talk about that in your videos? Sometimes, yeah. And where, like, did you, I guess what I'm trying to understand is, like, did you see the shirt and you're like, well, yeah, that makes sense because these little kids shouldn't be boning each other. Or did you, <laughs> or did you already feel that way? You know what I'm saying? Like, what came first? Like, how, how did that all come together is what I'm trying to, because it's just like it, a good shirt. I was just like, that's a good shirt. I yeah. don't know. But then you were like, yeah, you know what? And by the way, kids it just shouldn't goes be either, fucking. It goes either way. Like, it's good. It's a good message. Yeah. But then it's also like the tongue in cheek. Got it. And then it's like. I don't know. It's just like either way you want to go with it is great. Yeah. But but at the end of the day, it is a good message. So it's yeah. like I do back it. And, and so then, you do talk about it in your videos and stuff. Some like you're like, hey kids, stop fucking. Anyway, here's. The video. Um, I say like you know definitely wear condoms and stuff. Yeah. Like there's a lot of. I mean, at the end of the day, everyone is gonna have sex one day. Yeah. So I try to at least tell them to like, if, like if you're a virgin, I say at least wait till the right moment. Yeah. You don't you don't have to rush it. Like I waited till I thought I was in love. You know. Yeah. For the first time. And then, uh, so I tell them that, and then uh, try to let them know, like, you know, wear condoms yeah. every time, at least for now. It's just pretty amazing. What's funny to me, like, from the outside looking in, when I was just, like, looking at your stuff, is, like, you, like you said, on one hand, your management dropped you because you were too vulgar, and, like, you call people pussies, and, like, you're, like, a normal, like, funny dude. Yeah. And then, like, you have this side of you also that's, like, yo, but, like, seriously, like, you should be wearing condoms and, like, wait for the right one. You know what I mean? Like, like, it's, like, this interesting... I mean, it's all cool until your dick's burning, and then you're like, hey, <laughs> yeah. Danny, what do I do? Yeah. And it's like, I told you, wear yeah. the condoms. And then they laugh. They're like, yeah, yeah, fuck it. I'm going to fuck it raw. And then, they're, and, then, and then their dick's burning. They're like, should have listened to Danny, yeah. dude. Or they have a kid at 16. They're like, should have listened to Danny. I'm yeah. like, dude, I tried to tell you. But I think they will listen to me because I'm not, like, a sellout. Yeah. So it's like... Uh, I try not to sell out so that my, my word means more yeah. and that they will listen to me. Because like, it, it's always like cringy when people are trying to tell, tell you bullshit, you know? Yeah. But like back in the day, if like Bam Margera, I'd say it was like Bam Margera, Rob Deerdeck, you know, the whole Jackass people, those were like the gods of my life. So like if they would have said something, I would listen. Yeah. So if like the people following me, if I say something, I feel like they will at least like, you know, think about what I say a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I try to like not, not, uh, not fuck up my word at all yeah. by like doing a shitty brand deal or something yeah. because then my word means nothing. Yeah, no, I think it's cool. I think there's a cool, like I said, it's like a rare, like you don't normally see those two types of messages coming from the same person. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, did you, uh, do you get like, I would imagine being that you're now so massive on social media and people are so like engaged with you. Do you get like a bunch of weird messages? Like people like, like talking about like I should have listened to Danny like oh I got an STD should have listened to Danny like <laughs> oh look shirt. at my new should've baby I named Danny. it Danny because I should have listened to you I mean I do get a lot of kids like going like a lot of like life shit you know just yeah. going through life I get a lot of messages like that it's just hard to hard it gets depressing a little yeah a lot of people with like cancer or like these type of things I mean it makes it makes me feel shittier because I don't have anything wrong with me and yeah. then I'm but it, like it does it bumps me out yeah yeah but so I could like, see how that like sort of message would like open that up yeah. To you know what I'm saying? Like people coming to you and be like, "Yo, dude, like I'm a virgin. I've been waiting. Like, do you think this is the right girl for me?" And you're like, "Dude, I don't fucking know, man." Yeah, no, I, I don't know. Or like a lot of shit. Or like, kid's parent dies, or like, kid gets cancer, or kid gets. They're like, "What? Well, thanks for watching my video, or thanks for um, posting your videos, or whatever helps a lot." And then like, any advice, and I'm just like, "Fuck, I don't know." Yeah. <laughs> but I try to help any as much as I can. It just gets, it's very overwhelming because you can't possibly like. You can't like reply to everyone either. Yeah. And you can't like, you can't donate to every GoFundMe account. Yeah. You can't share every GoFundMe account or no one's going to want to follow you if you have a 30 GoFundMes a day. Yeah. So that's, that gets overwhelming too. Yeah, I get it. But it sucks because you obviously want to help, but it's like you can't possibly help, yeah. which sucks also. Yeah. Because yeah, you I know you it. can't. I get it. Um, oh, and then what about like, I feel like the making the, like, you know, once again, um, a lot of people have merch. Merch is a huge thing. Every uh, you know YouTuber, every everything has merch. The big thing about your stuff is you're in Zoomies, and it's working. Yeah, and it's selling really well, and it's becoming bigger than just your merch on a website somewhere. 
what was that transition like how did that happen well, and then was that a moment where you were like oh shit no i knew i knew it'd blow up this fucking bitch wouldn't fucking put it in the store for over a year she, <laughs> yeah. she kept telling us no and i was like dude it would i would just bitch at stefan all the time i'm like bro we'd fucking sell in zoomies mm -hmm. i was like we need it it would sell and, mm -hmm. I, and he kept trying and kept trying and kept trying and then uh can i say this type of stuff or no all right, and then uh, to bleep anything. Basically, the lady, the lady got switched to a different position or something. A new guy came in. He pitched it to that guy. The guy's like, "Let's go," yeah. and then it blew up right away. Right away. Yeah. And so that that for you was more like a, I told you so moment. I told I. It was like I fucking told you so like seventy times. I mean, Stefan just felt the same. Feels the same way. Yeah. He 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 knew too, but we were just trying, it, and it was like it was aggravating because for like a year i mean over a year probably and i was like dude what what's the issue yeah i was like look at my numbers what's the issue yeah. i will sell shit in zoomies yeah so i was like yeah I'm, I'm stoked though to be a part of that because they're really like supportive and stuff and that obviously helped me a lot financially yeah and like i would imagine like that just took shit to another level like yeah it, it, and it also just differentiates you from everyone else just doing merch yeah that made me realize like it doesn't it doesn't really matter how much money you have now I feel like five million or ten million is like the same as like thirty million. Yeah. Unless you, you need to get like hundreds now. Yeah. Yeah. It's all yeah. the same. You're all the same as the next guy. Sure. That's sad. To, to, that's sad to say, but it is, dude. Know. There, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. <laughs> you got to get like a couple hundred or a billion. <laughs> um, what about uh, uh, like where do you like how do you how do you get that hundred million? That's like, what I'm trying to think of. But how do where do you go from here? Uh, I'm working on a condom company. Nice. So I'm gonna do that. I think that could be big. Yep. So I'm gonna try to blow that up. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. And what about the clothing stuff? Like, do you want to do more retail? Do you want to? Yeah, I'm gonna. I like what I'm doing. Like, passion. Like, I'm. I'm very passionate about this. Like, if I had like 20 billion, I would. I, I would still like either make films or videos. Like, I would do one or the other. So I want to keep doing this stuff. Yeah. Keep selling the you know shirts because I like wear my own stuff too. So I want to keep doing that as long as I can, and then uh, create other brands as well, like the Condom one, and then. Uh, Maybe a production company one day too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe make our own films, like how Adam Sandler does. Yep. I like that route. Um, yeah. Um, That's great. Maybe another clothing line. I don't know. I own uh, the Ketnips one we talked talked to you about. Yeah. So that, I think that could be really big. What's the? How do you differentiate? Like, what's the difference between that one and this one? Um, you'd have to like look at it. It's like a whole another. It's like a whole another character and like. Got it. Um, it has like an eighty percent girl audience. Got it. Um. It's on Instagram if you have your phone. Yeah, I don't have Instagram on this phone because I try to like that's good. stay focused. I like that. But yeah, I'll look at but it. It's like the little heart thing with like the little thing waving. Yep. It's like a, okay. So it's it's pretty big. And then what about the other big thing that I just saw that you posted, and I saw because Mikey posted it, is you just got a sick house. Oh yeah, yeah. Like that has to. I mean, once again, like, not to keep harping on moments, but like, going from, coming back and forth and like stretching people at the skate park and like. Uh, doing landscaping or whatever, like getting a sick house in LA had to feel like some level of, I legitimately made it. Was it was cool. I bought a house in Florida, like for my mom and then I bought the neighbor's house. That was like way bigger deal. Really? Yeah. That was Why? Like, because it was home and because it was for your mom? And it was like the first time I think buying a house. Yeah. I think the like sixth, seventh time you buy a house, it doesn't sound. It was just cool in LA because it's so nice. It's yeah. just like, shit's crazy looking. Yeah. But uh, I mean, like, for like me, like the feeling was way bigger. Like in Florida, the house that I bought there. Yeah, that's funny. It was crazy. Because for me, it was like uh, L.A. was like just the moment of owning a house in Los Angeles, in like this city that I yeah. used to like dream of living in. I was like, well, that's crazy. It is crazy. Yeah. You know, if I think about it. Yeah. That's why. Um, okay, so that's so the the future is uh, producing content creation is like you're you love doing that, yeah. and then you really like making brands and tying in product. Yeah, I want to just, I mean, I invest in stocks too. And like I invested in Mikey's. Uh, oh, you did? Yeah, I, I put a 690,000 in that. That's amazing. That's a joke. And then, uh, so I just try to keep doing that. But that, I feel like that shit's not going to get you, you know, like a billion. A billion, yeah. But it keeps you at least if you fall off enough money to keep coming up with ideas For to sure. try to get you there. A condom company could get you a billion. That's what I'm trying to do, yeah. Yeah, that's good. I mean, I saw like Trojan has like 71% of the sales. So they really, oh, really? Like, so I'm going to try to just come in and fuck them all up. Do you know how much, how big the market is? Like what's 71% of the sales worth? Do I don't know. know total, but I think it said like 500 million or something was condoms and then a billion was like lube and like vibrators. You, you do all that too, right? We're going to do anything we can. Yeah. 
I'd like to see your marketing for lube. Oh, I got I got a bunch of ideas. I feel like you'd be a good marketer for sex products. Or anything. You know what I mean? Like a I, lube, slip and slide. I can like market anything. Shit. Yeah. That'd be good. No one's really doing that, right? Is there any like uh, social media, uh, like cool content creator people marketing anything even like that? I don't think there's any content creators really marketing anything in a good way. I like this, man. Is there anyone Maybe we can like fire 2%. some shots at? Is there anyone you personally like? Can we get some beef going? Anything uh, like that? Shit. Um, Who's the wackest? There's so many, man. Okay, if you could, if you could just, I'm not saying kill. Uh, can you help? I'm not saying. I'm not saying. Kill. We can say kill. I, I know a guy. In just... I know a guy in MacArthur Park. Four thousand dollars. Wow. He, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Okay, four thousand dollars. <laughs> okay, so let's just say you had a spare twenty grand sitting away, right? And you could—that's like five people. Five people you could just make disappear. <laughs> Who would you choose? Let me call my lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, listen. Let's take the violence out of it. If you could just make three make people peace, disappear, war. who would they be? Like delete their channels or something? Yeah. I feel like a hacker's gonna do that to me then if I say that shit. Too paranoid. I don't know, but it'd be. I good. don't know. Who, can you remind me? I get. This. How about um, name a couple? Come on. Yeah, you do. He knows. Dude. Okay, let me ask you this. We'll keep it. We'll keep it. We'll keep it. Uh, There's a lot. A so lot. It's like I try not to really even think about it because I don't want to like talk shit about people. Yeah, who, but kids like it. I mean, I feel like young do, people are out there like, like yeah, fuck them. It's Finally when no, it's said when it. I see their videos, then I'm like, oh my gosh, like what the fuck is this? Yeah. And I'm like, not that my like my videos I know are not great and they don't suit everyone, but like, it's just like some of them are really really awful. And so is your biggest uh, beef that like it's just bad. I just don't have any, I don't really have any beef right now, to be honest. But not beef, I'm just saying, like, it's your biggest problem with it that it, it's just shitty. I don't know. Or they're corny, or, like, what's the thing? I'd have to see it. They're just, <laughs> well, I really hate, like, I really hate, like, fake people. Yeah. Like, when they're just, like, I don't know, like, back in the day, there was, like, there was all those prank videos, and they were just really fake, and, like, just, you know, awful, and they perceive it as a different way when it's not that, and hire people to... And I'm sitting there in the sun for fucking six hours filming reactions. I'm like, dude, I'm gonna kill you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, that was like, really, I'd get really triggered back then. And then, uh, cause I, I really took the slow route. I was like, I'm gonna take my time. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pass on these deals. I would get like, I had, a, I remember I had like no money, and like a alcohol company offered me like twenty grand to like do a sponsored video. But I don't, I don't drink alcohol at all. Yeah. So I like had to turn it down. I was like, motherfucker, dude. Like, yeah. I didn't have, I didn't even have like two grand in my bank account. I didn't yeah. have anything. And. uh so I was like, I know, I knew, I knew just long term. Take your time, long term, it'll work out, yeah. and you'll have more money than these fuckers. Yeah. But I remember like watching the people do like fake pranks, and they were like making money, and I was like not making shit, and I was like, dude, I'm gonna fucking lose it. Like, yeah. But so now like, you are making money. But yeah, you yeah, still so, think they're whack. But it's still yeah, they are whack. I mean, everyone, th <laughs> everyone thinks they're whack. Even their friends think they're whack. They don't say it because most people are just scared to say things. But I mean, even the, they probably think they themselves are whack. Like yeah, they really like look in the mirror and they're like, dude, I'm such a pussy. But do you ever call these people out, like, personally? Yeah. I mean, I used to all the time. It's just, like, kind of... It's not really a thing anymore, so I don't really, like... It's, like... It would get annoying if I was just, like, got it. doing it all the time. It, I, I mean, it's just we were kind of on the topic, so... No, no, I get it. I like yeah. it. I, I'm, I'm down for it. I feel like everyone's always so, like, PC. No one ever, like, says that. And I like Is there it. anyone you dislike? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, shit, probably... <laughs> um gosh i oh man i'm trying to think of someone i, I got your saying. back too if you no know, no if yeah they come. Not, i don't feel like fighting is very big in the youtube community or violence you know yeah no one really does anything um gosh I, this is bumming me out because i would love to name someone because i wanted you to name i know someone. i, I know in, in 30 minutes i'm gonna think of like 70 people i know that i can name i know damn it people i just hate when people like I don't want to say they copy me. Okay, if I copy like the Robin Big Show yeah. or Bam Margera, yeah, I would never. And you ask me about it, yeah, I would never be like, "No, I came up with that," mm -hmm. or like, you know what I mean. I would be like, "Yeah, of course, yeah, Rob inspired me or, or Bam inspired me." Yep. There's people that copy me a lot. That yep. shit's kind of annoying too. Got but it. but they'll like, let's say they there's like 20 messages they sent me. Yeah. And then like, they pay money to see me on tour. And then they like unfollow me, unsend their messages, steal my ideas, act like they came yeah, up with yeah, it. Yeah. I'm like, bro, come on. Yeah, yeah. But it's not it's not that big a deal. That's just like one thing I can think of that's triggering. No, for sure. I'll tell you, this isn't a good one, but I'll tell you the type of shit that really depresses me is like um, that girl, uh, Trisha Paytas. Okay. You know who that is? I know who it is, yeah. So 
I don't really like watch, I don't watch enough. Like when I see, okay, let me tell you this. Let me tell you my uh, perspective. When I see like the things that go on in the YouTube community, like James Charles is beefing with blah, blah, blah. I don't really know what's going on. I don't watch enough yeah, of it either. to really know who's who or what the issue is. It just pops up on my like recommended or whatever. But I did see like a bunch of stuff about this girl, Trisha Paytas, who like, um, whatever, I said she was transgender or something and then didn't and then said she was dating a ghost and then and then like, but like, and so this is the only thing that bumps, it just depresses me about the way things work is I feel like you have the ability on YouTube to build a really big following and make a lot of money by just pure like lies and fuckery, yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah. So obviously I'm down for the pranks and the Bam Margera shit. Same thing with me. Like I grew up on CKY. Yeah, yeah. Obviously I was a part of Robin Big and Fancy Factory. Did a lot of dumb shit on TV. Yeah. My point is when it's just like I'm a transgender because you know it's going to get clicks and like I'm dating a ghost and let me tell you about having sex with a ghost. Have you and ever like, dated a ghost? I never have. Maybe I'm. Maybe that's you why. You should try. <laughs> maybe that's why I have the problem. <laughs> but see, my point is like I just I think that like being able to like like your whole sort of business model is like how can I just rile people up? Yeah. Um, and the fact that you can make so much money off of that and like kids are spending money on that stuff that just makes me sad. Yeah, that, you know? I, I agree. That's what immediately comes to mind. I'm sure there's a million people I don't like. That's, it's the same concept, like just getting people to watch bullshit videos and share it when it's not when it's fucking yeah. irrelevant. But I'll be honest, I'm the same way as you too. In some ways, like I didn't like I used to hate uh, Logan and Jake Paul until I met them. Yeah, and then they're really not. They're just normal like, off people. camera. Yeah. They're just normal people. They're yeah, like yeah. playing the game. But their content sucks. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, like when I used to see his vlogs and stuff, I was like, gosh, like this is insane. Yeah, no, they're awful. Like their videos are garbage. Yeah, and I used to talk but shit about I, I them. All the time I don't ever right? talk to them or hang out with them or anything. But no, I, they're just normal dudes. Yeah, like, of they, course. You know, they they know they're just trying to make content. Yeah, exactly. Um. Anyway, um. I think we did it. Is there anything I'm missing? I don't know. That was good. We did 50 minutes. Um, okay, here's my two big questions at the end that I ask everyone. Number one is, if you could jump in a time machine, you're still young, but if you could jump in a time machine and go to any point in your own life and tell yourself anything, where would you go and what would you say? Oh, and say, probably like eight years old, I'd be like, dude, Little League's about to start next year. Fucking enjoy it. <laughs> really, really enjoy it. Yeah. And take full advantage of a Little League. That was the best time of my life. Majors. Yeah, but I feel like... I feel like 60-year-old you would say the same thing about you right now. Fuck, man. Literally. Like, bro, you're about to launch in Zoomies. You just got this fucking house in L.A. I feel like no matter what, though, it's like you always want to go back in time. No matter, like right now, yeah. in 10 years, you're going to be like, man, wish I could go back to this day. Oh, yeah, I do that. So it's like you got to just enjoy it where you're at right now because no matter, you're never going to be like good. You're always going to want to go back. Yeah, when I'm feeling bummed out, I, with all of my power, close my eyes and try to imagine that I'm like old and dying and and remembering this time. This exact and I'm like, moment. Damn, that yeah, was yeah. sick. And then I'm here. Yeah, exactly. That's what I would like think about. Cause like I'll like let's say I was like, man, I wish I could go back to like when I was fifteen. Yeah. It's like when, when I'm, you know, forty, I'm gonna wish I could go back to like this moment. Yeah. So just enjoy this moment as much as I can. Yep. Um and then here's the other one. If you could uh prescribe anything to the entire world and they have to do it for thirty days. So whatever you say they just have to do. 30 days what do you what does everyone have to do no fat no i'm kidding i don't know <laughs> <laughs> um i've never done that shit maybe some exercise or something exercise for 30 days. what would you recommend i'd say exercise is a good one 30 days i would say 30 days I mean, if every human was exercising for 30 days, that'd be pretty cool. Off the top of my head, I would say uh, on day one, set a goal for the end of the 30 days and every day make sure you're moving towards it. Because I think a lot of people can make a lot of progress if they actually just yeah. move towards a clear goal and they don't realize what they're even capable of. So I think after, the th even if your thing was like, I'm going to exercise for 30 days, I'm going to eat right, I'm going to whatever. I think after that 30 days, you'd be like, oh shit, I can do a lot in 30 days. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I agree. Set some goals. Um, okay, what's everyone, what should everyone... Look out for what should everyone? Are we allowed to talk about your? We're not allowed to talk about the other company big news yet, right? We can talk about whatever, right? No. What new company? The Catnips. The other, where the other clothing company is going to be 
go. Oh, that. Yeah. So big things coming. So that's going to be in. <laughs> <laughs> so big things coming. Uh, Zoomies is crushing it. So keep, that's going to keep growing. Yeah, Zoomies is doing good. Um, videos. I, go, I do tours. So I'm going to do another one in July. What do you um, do on the tour? Bunch of shenanigans. Yeah. Try to make it entertaining. When the kids leave, I want to be like, that was sick. Are you like a, like you get like a stage like venue type? Yeah. That's sick. It's like, it's random stuff. It's cool though. Um, do that. I don't know. We're working, we're working on a documentary. About trying what? To, trying to get that on Netflix. My life. Sick. Probably in like a year or two, I'll post that. Um, that's a, I think that's about it right okay. now. Okay. Good shit. Well, thanks yeah. for coming through, man. Congrats on all the success. Thanks. I see those shirts everywhere. Same with you. You're crushing it. Stoked on you. Yeah, thank you, man. It's lit. We did it. Guys, if you like that and you want to see more like it as well as vlogs, other web series, and all the random stuff that I'm doing here on YouTube, don't forget to click that subscribe button. You won't regret it. I promise.